Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. How are you today, my friend? Hope everything is going really good for you. And uh, we're enjoying a beautiful day here in Central Florida. Hope it's good wherever you are too. Got a wonderful program today. I'm not sure wonderful is the best word. We've got a very thought-provoking program. Uh, something going on around the world, but it's very prevalent in the United States. And just this week, uh, President Trump is starting to address it, and that is human trafficking. And uh, it's going on everywhere. I have a couple of articles I got just this week. Bus drivers are on the alert for human trafficking, police leading the force. And I also read where uh, truckers are being trained to recognize human trafficking. I think God's about to do something and save a lot of young people. But you know who is ahead of all of them? My guest today, Elizabeth Melendez Fisher Good. She's been here before and she has been working on this and created corporations and foundations to make it happen. And so uh, she actually was the White House this week talking about this. We're fortunate to have her. But also I want you to know that she's got a brand new book, this is hot off the press, called Groomed. And you've heard that term so many times when it comes to child abuse, uh, sexual assault on children, the grooming. And you know they don't learn anything new. They use the same old story for all the kids, but it works. And she can tell us about that. So I'm glad to have Elizabeth back and going to join Brooke in the kitchen. Brooke is our floor director here and I've asked her to just join me. We're gonna make some garlic mashed potatoes and it's smelling good in here. It's kind of a, I think it's a different take on mashed potatoes than you've ever had. So um, we can send you the recipe if you want it. Before I join her though, uh, again want to offer you the book Money Saving Mom. We're kind of in the uh, beginning of a new year and a lot of people have great resolutions about what they're going to do with money but you know it helps to have a guide it helps to have somebody who wrote a book about how it worked for them and how it didn't work for them I want to save you all that time so we're offering you that book for a gift to the program of at least seventeen dollars and that's not much that seventeen might save you a lot of money when you realize what the author had to say so if you use the 800 number, it's right there, 1-800-229-0049. Or write to me at box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, we will get it right out to you. We've offered it before. We have just a few left. So if you want one, it would be a good idea to order it now. All right, I'm over here in the kitchen, and here comes Brooke. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. This is going to be fun because... Yes. Um, Anybody that watches this show knows that Stephanie and Wanda are both, and I might be better than you, which is bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but you she, know my story. She's a bride. Yes. And in my generation, women cooked the meal and the men ate them. But I've talked to you, and you guys kind of work in the kitchen together. Oh, it, he's probably a better cook than I am. Uh -huh. You know, um, I've learned, a, it's embarrassing <laughs> to say, I've learned a lot from him just because of, you know, what people <laughs> think out there that the mm. woman's the only one that should be in the kitchen cooking, but we really work together and cook all of our meals typically together. Well, that's fun. Now, his dad was quite a cook, too, so yeah. that's probably where mm -hmm. he learned it. And his and, mother was a great cook. So. And maybe a few months ago, or over a year ago, you saw uh, when I had her family on it, yeah. and your dad, in his 50s, had a stroke. A massive stroke. That left yeah. him quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. But we had them on the show. We got a picture of when they were yeah. on the show. Aww. And uh, there's your mommy. Yeah, look at the way she's looking at him. I love that. I can't, <laughs> she uh, him. I can't tell you how much I admire your family. Yeah. And um, to be around them, you were seemed really normal. You were all yeah, looking you, out for each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, your mother is an absolute inspiration. She, and, yeah, she is. Yeah, so Brooks learned a lot from that. Well, let's get on this recipe. Okay. Okay, you put some heat under that. And yes. You're going to put, uh, I think it's a half a cup of whipping cream and a half a cup of milk. I'd probably do the whole thing, whipping cream myself. Oh, right, me too. <laughs> yeah. And then add uh, that, ch finish chopping up the rosemary and put in that. Now, uh, as for roasted garlic, you take the whole bulb and just cut the top of it off and you put it in uh, some aluminum foil and cover it with a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper 
And I was, we, you know, look at that. We uh, put salt out in here and it all oh, sticks it together. Oh, it got stuck. I know that humidity, yeah. that Florida yeah. humidity. So we'll mess that around That's a little bit. That's beautiful though. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yes. And I I'm, love when you use real garlic, you know, not just the powdered garlic, but mm -hmm. fresh garlic. And you garlic. just put that in for, they say 45 minutes or an hour wouldn't hurt it. And then you take the, it comes out like this and it's supposed to squeeze it's out. Beautiful. Look so. at that. We'll see. I've never done it before, but there it comes. It's coming right out. Oh my gosh, yep. So these potatoes are truly garlic. Garlic potatoes, 100%. And Look, I'm looking at the difference between my cut and, and what was done before. <laughs> well, Anita. well, we all have to learn. So. <laughs> we got the bride here. All right, I'm gonna put this in. Okay. Well, the you got it. It won't work. Oh, let's make sure no, it's plugged. No, it's plugged in. Okay, it's coming on. <laughs> it's not working. Oh, there, there it goes. There we go. All right. I didn't hit I'm the right. Stir this up. And these are mashed. They're called uh, rosemary garlic mashed potatoes, and nothing better than rosemary. Oh no. So when uh, this is supposed to come to a simmer. Yeah. Right. But, but the potatoes are hot, so I'm not sure it makes a okay. whole lot of difference. I, I've mentioned to the audience before that I love side dishes. I I don't fix meat for myself hardly at all. Yeah. If I go out and eat it. I don't have anything against it. But um, okay, let's go ahead and put you that want in. You to? All right, yeah. let's do it. It's heated up a bit, and there you go. You can take a dish of these home to Matt tonight. Ooh. We love mashed mm -hmm. potatoes and we cook with garlic. I do too, and I like a lot. Of, I like a lot of liquid in them. Yeah, right. Like um, this. Matthew yeah. actually like likes his with a little bit of chunk. And oh I've, really? I've had to sacrifice and. Oh. You know, well, that's what I'm we do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta sometimes have those, so we eat them with chunks. Well, <laughs> and not creamy, which is what I love. It's like fun this. to. Um, talk to a bride once in a while. So do you plan the meals for a week? Or? No, not, not for us. I know there's people that people do, do that, but for us, we will just go grocery shopping that weekend uh -huh. and kind of have an idea, but we also just have our staples mm -hmm. and then we make meals off of those. So mm -hmm. you want to taste let's a little give bit this, of this a try. The, the, that's the consistency oh, I like. Oh, this is great. That, that's the way my, um, thank you. My mother-in-law did it. She put, um, evaporated milk. You good? Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's oh, yeah. good. Mm. Potatoes are kind of like a creamy. canvas. They have no taste to you. Oh, yeah. No, that you is awesome. That's very creamy. If you want to add something wonderful to your meal, I, you want this recipe. And it's free. Information is coming up. on. Do you need to go? Yes. Okay, <laughs> let me get going. <laughs> you got to get back to your camera. <laughs> anyway, you will love this recipe. And I highly recommend it. As I mentioned, I'm very very partial to side dishes more than meat. You know what I mean? Uh, this is called garlic, rosemary garlic mashed potatoes. We'll get it right out to you. Information's coming up on your screen. You can get it the way you want it and we'll get it right out to you. Stay with me. If you haven't met Elizabeth Fisher before, you're going to love her. So stay there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right. My guest, Elizabeth Melendez Fisher Good, is the CEO and co-founder of CELA Freedom. I remember that when you were here last time in the Sela Way Foundation. And these exist to prevent sexual abuse, any kind of abuse called human trafficking. And um, she probably knows more about this than anybody in the United States. And as I mentioned, uh, in the State of the Union address with President Trump just earlier this week, uh, he mentioned an effort to uh, 
set up an office for this, and she was there. So uh, congratulations, Thank and you. also congratulations on your book. Thank you. Brand new. Yeah, it's exciting. And I've, I've read it rather rather thoroughly. Sometimes you have to really speed through, speed yeah. through it. But so, and, and I showed these before where they've got policemen mm -hmm. and um, bus drivers. Right. And I read another place, truck drivers. That's genius. Truckers against trafficking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is genius. Whoever thought of that, because those guys are on the road. Right. And I'll bet they have a sixth sense. They see a lot. And mm -hmm. once they're taught what it is they're looking at, I mm -hmm. think that helps a great deal. And what exactly, because there's a lot of good people watching right now yeah. and a lot of good Christian people, uh, what should we be looking for? Well, you know what? We're not talking about international trafficking. We're talking about right here in the United States. And so I think the first thing is helping people just be open to the fact that it is happening mm -hmm. and it's not what you think. Mm -hmm. um, so just take all those images of Cambodia and, you know, what you, th what you imagine over right. there. And it's really hidden differently here in America. That's good. To yeah. Know. So to just be open to that. And then to know in America, too, the reason you started saying they work with childhood sexual abuse and trafficking is that we have such an underbelly here, one of the deepest secrets. My book is really, it's sort of about secrets and what's what's being hidden, and it gets into everything, not just trafficking, but the big piece that's the root of sex trafficking is the secret mm -hmm. of childhood sexual abuse. And so what your listeners need to know, your viewers, is that really the stats say that one out of three little girls, one out of five little boys are walking around with a secret. And so we are just vigilant about helping people know the signs to look for those secrets early enough that these children are not then keeping it and then they're even more vulnerable to be coerced into things that they can't get out of because they're just groomed and they're they're vulnerable and the secrets are no one will believe you mm -hmm. don't tell anybody or your mother and daddy will be killed or something like that there's nothing new with these people you're you're my special girl you're my special boy you know, this is this makes you very special. This is our secret. Mm -hmm. That's what even our curriculum. We have K through 12 curriculum that there's a bill pending in Congress right now. Um, but it's, everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you start in kindergarten?" And I said, mm -hmm. "Yeah, but it's it's very very easy to have a child look at it. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is teaching them the difference between a secret is not okay. No adult needs you to keep a secret. A surprise is fine. A surprise party, everyone's going to know about later." Mm -hmm. But a secret. So it's just teaching them like the basics because what you said, there's just a few words and they use it all the time. Same tactics. And if a little kindergartner goes, oh, that's a word. That's a red flag. You know, we have them color a red traffic light. And it's that mm -hmm. simple to start undoing the root of what leads to this horrific in America, which we could talk about. I read, too, that a mother can give a child a code word. Mm -hmm. And if somebody drives up and wants to pick the little girl up, and they'll say, your mother told me to pick you up and yes. bring you home. Uh, the kid says, what's the code word? Said yeah. that guy took off like lightning. <laughs> we had that, my did kids. You? We totally did. did I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even to these days, we would say, and if you're sleeping over at someone's house and something goes wrong, just call and say, our word was chicken noodle soup. Which, how weird is that? But they, they can make that phone call in front of anybody. I don't feel good. I'd love to come home and have some chicken noodle soup. And then you're like, oh, my gosh. That, yeah. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, from your book, I get the $150 billion business annually. Yeah. Um, some girls have been forced into sex 40 times a day. And as you said, one out of three American women was sexually abused. And um, this book... Yeah. One of the great reasons just to unstick the women from their past. You know, they might be leading what you think is a normal life right now, but that secret is still gnawing mm -hmm. at them. The name of the book is Groomed, and I would like to absolutely, without hesitation, just recommend this for pastors, yeah. for Sunday school teachers, for any youth leader. You know, when you're in these offices, you need to be as informed as you possibly can be. Right, right. Yeah. What ever got you into this? Into the whole sex trafficking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I moved from Chicago to Florida to do nothing. That was the goal. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of had a vacation home down here, and we're going to slow down. Uh -huh. um, but I was part of a ministry event, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And we were, it was my friends from Chicago, and they wanted to hold something down here for women mm -hmm. to slow down and take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And we just were looking for an underdog charity. So I'd only been here for a year. It was 2010. 
And as I asked, what's an underdog thing that we could raise money for? We wanted to just bring it to the light, whatever needed mm -hmm. help. And I was told our local children are being sold for sex. And I didn't really understand that at the time, right? right. Didn't think that was what trafficking, what do you mean? And you know, you come to find out not just those stats, but then once they are um, abused and have that happen, a lot of kids run away. And so what's happening down here and why they said our local kids are being sold for sex is that they will keep the secret until typically they hit puberty. And you hit puberty and that's when a child will get promiscuous or start acting out. And that's in my story. I share my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if we as adults don't deal and with our own secrets, book. oh yeah, our own secrets will manifest generationally if we don't deal. And so these kids then will run away and within 48 hours, 80% of them will be lured into the sex trade. And so that's where you get that number. They're sold 15 to 40 times a day. So when I heard that, I'm like, that's crazy. You know, we're, we'll raise money for that. Who do we write a check for? And there was no one to write a check to. And so one step after another step, now we're the leading service provider in America to domestic sex trafficking. That's survivors. just that's just wonderful. Now, I have read, and you and I talked before, yeah. the program that statistics change yeah. hourly almost, but the, the United States was number one. And that just, I can't tell you, that hits me in the pit of my stomach. I mean, here's this nation with this wonderful Christian constitution right. and, and everything, you know, we're not, we're not the heathen yeah. out there. Um, if that is true, you know, I thought of places right. I'd heard of like Thailand and all, but I've heard Tampa is awful. Yeah. And I've heard Sarasota is. Yeah. The Sarasota's gotten cleaned up a bit. Tampa, there's more strip clubs here than Vegas. So. Is that right? Yeah. It's sort of a sex destination. Didn't realize that either when I was moving down. Yeah. And, um, as we're making this program, we just got over the Super Bowl and my team won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my daddy was a pastor in Kansas City for 19 years, so we have to go with the Chiefs. But anyway, besides that, there were things on the radio quite a bit, you know, about what you can mm -hmm. expect from the Super Bowl. And human trafficking is yeah. right in the middle of it. Right there, I know. Well, any major event, and they're finally talking about it. When I was in D.C. last week, I was also up there to testify to Congress, and they said... You know, the stats are showing that trafficking has gone up X percentage. I don't remember what the percentage, uh -huh. the numbers are always changing. And they said, how do you explain that? And I said, I think it's finally being reported. So when you see all these new stats and all these new numbers, they're finally reporting it. They're finally knowing what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, our organization trained 40 law enforcement agencies in Connecticut not long ago. And cops had been on the force mm -hmm. for over 20 years. And one guy said, oh, this training, it was like walking in with one eye, walking out with two. Because even though these guys are on the force, they might get an hour of education, until they're really trained, they don't know what they're looking at. So now mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're able to really be protectors, really intervene, mm -hmm. understand when they pull someone over what they're looking for in that car. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's seeing it for mm -hmm. the first time, right? It's been a decade of work. <laughs> well, uh, praise the Lord and praise the Lord for all the progress that has been made. And we're making progress now because my viewers are real smart. They're, they're going to learn. Yeah. Uh, but also that the president of the United States, when they put the spotlight on something, everybody really sees it. Yeah. Now, according to your book, and the name of the book is Groomed, uh, within 48 hours of leaving home, 80% of runaways are approached by a predator. And a, a predator can recognize one then just yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's so interesting because there's two pathways we should really be concerned about as parents. And that's why this book is important because anything that you're still uncomfortable talking about in your own life mm -hmm. is going to be a pathway to run right into it for your children, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. So the, the keeping the secrets and running away within 48 hours, a child that's running away from that, they're like, anything out there has to be better. An 11-year-old girl said, what's happening on the streets has got to be better than what happens with my brother and my dad every night. And the first man that came oh, up to her, she said, he was like a 50-year-old man, and he's like, I'll give you $10 to have sex with me. And she goes, it's not my dad, $10? Mm -hmm. I could buy McDonald's? Yeah, this is going to be great. Yes. Like, yeah. they're, they're so little. Their brains are so young. So when they get deceived and lured in, they call him a Romeo pimp. The guy just has to act like he's a boyfriend. And they're like, finally. And even yeah. though he's abusive and he makes them do other things, that's all they've ever known. Mm -hmm. So they're lured in. But we should talk about the online predator now as well. Yes. Um, this <laughs> on online thing is really a mixed blessing, isn't it? Very it's, mixed. Yeah. Yeah. How does it, how does it work? Well, most, most even 
people my age, you know, have computers and phones and things. Yeah, and, and you know what, it's interesting because they say the American Academy of Pediatrics says that 75% of four-year-olds are now given a smart device. And so that's an iPad or an iPhone or a Samsung, whatever. A four-year-old. Four-year-old. And they could probably teach me. And most parents don't know that they come preloaded to explicit. There's no filter. So unless you go in and put the controls on, your kid and these Every kind of pornography are showing neuro, neurological resetting by age 8, 9, 10. I mean, the pathways are totally getting changed by the imaging and the imprinting that's happening. But when I was just in D.C., I, this was amazing to learn. I mean, we know now that one out of nine children, no matter where you live, zip code, will be approached in their own home, in their own privacy of their bedroom probably, by a predator online that is trying to lure them and coerce them. So we have our runaways, and that's a pathway. Mm -hmm. But your kid, that's an average kid, and there was a tribal chief up in D.C. speaking on one of the panels at the summit, and he's also a judge, and he said, we were so straightforward. We thought, we should, you know, you warn your kids, don't talk to anybody you don't know, and they think you're stupid. Oh, Mom, it's just another kid. Yeah. He's nice. Nothing. And he said the closest Walmart was 50 miles away, closest McDonald's, 61 miles away. The thing that he failed in, and that's why this book will unlock what it is that you're afraid of, because what we are afraid of, we almost subconsciously push our children into it because mm -hmm. we're making it taboo. So he said, I made my daughter's world too small. You know, I, I built in that this is your tribe, this is your people, this is your, and all this guy had to say to her online is, oh, there's so much more. I can make you a model. You're beautiful. Mm -hmm. She was hiding the relationship for months, and then she ran to go be with him mm -hmm. and was trafficked. Well, and to give a four-year-old a device is just a little bit insane. Uh, Deborah Ray and I were talking about this the other day, and I... Of course, my kids are grown. I got great grandchildren, but um, the, the youngest one could probably teach me oh, yeah. a lot. But the first thing I would do if I faced that, and whenever we felt it was an appropriate age uh -huh. for a child to have a phone, because they are safety, you know, right. the, um, so it's a, it's a mixed sword. blessing. Yes, it is. I would give it to them, but I would say, "This is not your phone. It's mine. I'm loaning it to you, mm -hmm. and I'll take it back." Any time. Yeah. It's when they say, this is mine, this is mine. Hope that, that's weird, what you yeah. want to break. Uh, just join me. I'm talking to, to Elizabeth Fisher about a brand new book called Groomed. Uh, everybody should read it. I really believe that. So you'll have knowledge of what's going on. You might learn something that could serve you well. Uh, if you face certain situations, you say, oh, yes, I know what that is. But for pastors and Sunday school teachers, youth leaders, anybody in any kind of a leadership capacity, uh, certainly uh, school teachers. Um, do, they, do they train school teachers to spot things? You know what, we just passed a rule in the state of Florida and we have a bill pending in Congress to, in Florida right now, it's the first state that mandates every school district has to have training for not only the staff, but K through 12 curriculum. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, so hopefully it'll go in Congress too. House Bill 4388. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. House Bill 4388. Yes. yes. And who would vote against that? Who <laughs> would know? Who, who would vote against <laughs> All right, the yes. name of the book is Groomed, and uh, the website's on the screen. You can get it there, but you could probably get it at Barnes and Noble yeah. and um, Amazon, Amazon Books and, and all those good things. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now you, your background gave you a lot of knowledge for this because uh, you faced a lot of yeah. difficult situations. And so God didn't have a hand in all that, but he did say, I can use it. He can use it. And, it's and the perfect he is platform. using it. Yeah. Because your book is very explicit that when you have these wounds, and if one out of three is being offended today or outright abused in some way, right. then they're carrying this secret and never ever be whole until they release it, will they? Right, no, and you know what's so interesting? I mean, speaking about the churches, I would say this would be so great for women's groups and coming mm -hmm. to speak to women's ministry groups because so many, and even adults, because they keep the secrets. Every time I speak, there will be somebody between 70 mm -hmm. and 90 that will come up to me just full of tears and say, I've never told anyone. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me for the first time what has been their secret and their burden. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, we find out just, it is the, I can't say st statistically because I haven't seen it written, but I've seen mm -hmm. thousands of people as I've spoken. Mm -hmm. Anybody that keeps their secret, 
it happens then to their child. It's so bizarre how Satan will, anything you carry is shame. And it's not your fault, but we hold it as shame. And then there's this weird inability to be able to speak to it or protect it. Then they're like, I can't believe my child was abused. But until that breaks and the freedom to speak and become mm -hmm. an advocate, you don't have the authority to protect your next generations. So this book taps into mm -hmm. all of that and our own personal freedom. Mm -hmm. And you'll have her story in this, but uh, that was the one thing I felt that really stood out. There's so much information in it that <laughs> you know, a lot of you ladies that I'm talking to right now, you know, you know exactly what Elizabeth's talking about, you know what she's written about, but you're absolutely adamant that until there's a light shown on it, you're not going to be a whole person. No. And it affects every relationship you have, right? Every relationship, because we're not walking in our true freedom. Anytime, I mean, it has chapters, it's not just about sex, right? Sex trafficking mm -hmm. or sexual abuse, groomed to be invisible groomed for judgment. You know, I was raised in a very judgmental church family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of rules, legalism. I can, I can relate. Yeah, yeah, we both had a little, backgrounds were similar. Um, groomed for endurance, that which we had to endure as a child that made us strength. You know, people are like, oh, she can handle mm -hmm. it, she's okay. Then we go into inappropriate things in life that we should have better boundaries around. Mm -hmm. So it really opens the door to a lot of conversations. A lot. a lot. So I think it's empowering for anyone that wants to really make sure they're bringing freedom to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying that, I was just thinking of that scripture, you shall know the truth. Yeah. And the truth will set you free. He came to free the captives, and we think of that as a physical captivity. Mm -hmm. right. But it can very much be a spiritual, emotional, yeah. and it'll rob you of the kind of relationships that the Lord wants you to have. Mm -hmm. And I, I want her to come back right away because we barely scratched the surface on this. But let me remind you again of the name of the book, Groomed. And I'm thankful, as I showed you at the top of the program, these are these articles are in, within the last week about how bus drivers, and, and now we know that teachers are going to be educated mm -hmm. and the police leading the way. And also the one that I really loved, and I didn't cut it out, was the, was the truck drivers. Yeah, the truck drivers. <laughs> I, think they, I think they're gonna make a big, big difference. And what a pleasure that I can bring these kind of subjects to you and God can open a door maybe for your own healing and I'll never hear about it or anything, but uh, we are workers together for his kingdom. And uh, she's gonna be on again real soon. So, um, because we've just scratched the surface on her book, but until then, please remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.